To accept this free call, press 1. Hello, my name is Julius Darius Jones. I am on H unit in OSP of McAllister, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma State Penitentiary on death row. I guess you could say I was truly naive. I, I, I didn't think something like this could happen because it's just, it was suffocatingly, you know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't breathe. I, I've never felt so cold in my life, you know, thinking that, man, this can really happen. This is really happening to me. Like I was just alone and cold and abandoned. Even if I get out of here tomorrow, I can't get back 21 plus years. My life is it's not stopping. The threat of me being executed is not stopping. Julius Jones is one of 45 people currently sitting on Oklahoma's death row. The state is planning to start killing people sentenced to death by lethal injection again, lifting a five-year ban brought on by two botched executions. One man wasn't fully sedated and was in extreme pain for 43 minutes before dying. Another was given the wrong drug and died after 18 minutes. Now that the moratorium is lifted, Jones and his attorneys are worried that he'll be the next to die even though there's significant evidence that his trial and conviction were racially motivated. Jones was just 19 years old when he was arrested for the murder of Paul Howell, a white insurance agent who was shot to death during a carjacking. Another suspect accused Jones of being the shooter, except Jones didn't match the description given by the only witness to the crime who said the shooter had half an inch of hair sticking out from underneath a hat. Photos of Jones from days before the murder show his head was shaved at the time. In fact, the suspect who testified against Jones did fit the given description. The co-suspect was also convicted of murdering Howell, but was given a 30-year sentence in exchange for his testimony. He was released after serving just 15 years. The man's cellmates later came forward claiming he'd boasted about setting up Jones while awaiting sentencing. After a 12-day trial, Jones, an engineering freshman at the University of Oklahoma on a full ride, was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. He's been incarcerated since 1999 and has been held in solitary confinement for the last 12 years. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I did take these pictures because it gives me hope and it's just a good feeling to um, be able to look back. And when he comes home, we can maybe go from where we left off. I'm humbled enough to realize that my brother could have been executed. And for all of those that have been executed and were innocent, that gives me strength, and I'm humbled enough to realize that over, this, over the course of 20 years, our prayers have not been for nothing. In Oklahoma, there's a lot of things I didn't see until they happened to me. I question the system now. In 2017, the bipartisan Oklahoma Death Penalty Review Commission found that it was, quote, undeniable that innocent people have been sentenced to death in Oklahoma. The state is notorious for aggressively seeking the death penalty, a practice that was pushed by the former district attorney of Oklahoma County, Bob Macy. His nickname, Cowboy Bob. Macy successfully pushed for the death penalty in Jones's and 53 other cases during his tenure, making him one of the deadliest prosecutors in U.S. history. He resigned in June 2001 after he was accused of prosecutorial misconduct and tampering with evidence. Macy died in 2011, and dozens of people he helped sentenced to death have had their sentence reversed on appeal or been exonerated. But alleged corruption isn't the only reason behind this kind of miscarriage of justice. It also comes down to racism. In Jones's case, he reported in an appeal that his arresting officer used a racial slur. Then, the prosecution rejected all but one black person from the jury hearing the case and one of the 12 jurors used threatening language and a racial slur in the jury room. On top of this, Jones's state-appointed legal team didn't do enough preparation for his trial. David McKenzie was the lead defense counsel. Julius was the first and only death penalty trial I've ever done. 
I wish I had the experience that I have now in asking some of the questions of some of the witnesses. Now, when you're dealing with the death penalty, I would have liked to have had longer. I would have liked to have had unlimited resources. Our investigator in, in this case, while a good guy, just wasn't up to the task. I don't think there's any hope left for Julius and the people that have the ability to kill him are more resolved to kill him. And I don't think there's any stopping him. Oklahoma has the highest black incarceration rate in the U.S., with black people incarcerated at 4.5 times the rate of white people. Jones's case is now part of the ongoing national conversation on race and the U.S. justice system, thanks in large part to his best friend, Jimmy Lawson. Yeah, so when I got into this 20 years ago, I had no idea, you know, the stuff that I was going to be learning about our criminal justice system, not only in Oklahoma, but on a national level. So what today's climate has done for us with this movement for Julius Jones, it's, it's brought people antennas to say, oh, there's a local case here in Oklahoma that's also going through the same thing that we're seeing nationally. So we're going down to the Black Lives Matter parade, AKA March. This march is about two things. It's one is about standing for solidarity for social justice, and then also standing for those who are incarcerated, what I call incarceration justice, such as my friend Julius Jones. Our main focus here today is to continually demand justice for our brother, Julius Jones. This is a gentleman who can lose his life. But I'm here today to bring you hope because we have the capacity to change this. Our voices and our votes have the capacity to put pressure on the state of Oklahoma to say that we will not be denied. No, you're not going to kill Julius because we ain't going to take it. Pressure to reopen Jones's case is also coming from a new legal team. We were first appointed to Julius's case in August of 2016 after all of his appeals had ended. We, at that point, began to go back through Julius's case file and were just shocked by the number of issues that pointed to Julius's innocence and his wrongful conviction and his lack of a fair trial that had never fully been aired in any court. I have never seen a case um, uh, where the legal team thought uh, it was a case of, of innocence and they simply rested without uh, conducting an investigation, uh, without uh, putting on a vigorous uh, defense. Resources dictate outcomes in the criminal justice system. And when you have defendants who are too poor to hire a lawyer who will zealously advocate their case, the chances of them getting a just outcome are severely reduced. Oklahoma, like the rest of the country, is grappling with its long history of racism and starting to make some changes like lowering sentences for some nonviolent crimes. Two years ago, it commuted sentences for over 400 prisoners, reducing the state's prison population by 15% in the largest single-day mass commutation in U.S. history. The state's Republican governor didn't respond to a vice news inquiry about the allegations raised in Jones's case but said he's committed to lowering the incarceration rate in the state and believes his office has made historic progress. Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board was asked for comment, but refused to provide one regarding Jones's case. Jones applied to the board on October 15, 2019. This is his 10th attempt at getting his case reviewed. It's his last chance. If you feel so abdomen about him being guilty, give him a new trial so that we can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, because there's a lot of doubt in his case. Give him a chance. We're asking for him to have a, a chance, because once you execute a life, you cannot reverse that. You, can't, you cannot bring that life back. I am hopeful. I try not to delve too deep into thinking about what I've missed out on and, and what I've lost, because it does depress me. So yeah, man, all the support and love, and I mean, just how people want justice, actual justice, fairness. That's what gives me hope. It's an amazing thing to see. I'm hopeful that we are at a precipice of change and that change is for the better. Truth should matter, that actual truth should matter. <laughs>